both here and at all your churches throughout the world. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Our service of Holy Eucharist begins on page 185 of the Book of Alternative Service. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you, to you all hearts are open, all, all desires open, known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we are taught by your word that all our doings without love are worth nothing. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtue. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our first reading. A reading from the book of Exodus. Now, a new king arose over Egypt who did not know Joseph. He said to his people, look, the Israelite people are more numerous and more powerful than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, or they will increase and, in the event of war, join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. Therefore, they set taskmasters over them to oppress them with forced labor. They built supply cities, Pithom and Ramses for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread, so that the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites. The Egyptians became ruthless in imposing tasks on the Israelites and made their lives bitter with hard service and mortar and brick and in every kind of field labor. They were ruthless in all the tasks that they imposed on them. The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was named Shipra and the other Pua, when you act as midwives to the Hebrew women and see them on the birth stool, if it is a boy, kill him. But if it is a girl, she shall live. But the midwives feared God. They did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, and, but they let the boys live. So the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and said to them, why have you done this and allowed the boys to live? The midwives said to Pharaoh, because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth before the midwife comes to them. So. God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and became very strong. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families. Then Pharaoh commanded all of his people, Every boy that is born to the Hebrews you shall throw into the Nile, but you shall let every girl live. Now a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw that he was a fine baby, she hid him three months. When she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child into it and placed it among the reeds of the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river while her attendants walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying. And she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrews' children, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, 
Shall I go and get you a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child and nurse it for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and she took him as her son. She named him Moses because, she said, I drew him out of the water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 124, page 884. We'll say it responsibly by the whole verse. If the Lord had not been on our side, let Israel now say, If the Lord had not been on our side, then enemies rose up against us. Then would they have swallowed us up alive in their fierce anger towards us. Then would the waters have overwhelmed us and the torrent gone over us. Then would the raging waters have gone right over us. Blessed be the Lord. He has not given us over to be a prey for their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken, and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And together, helper and defender of Israel, rescue the people of the world from the destructive anger, and set us free to love and serve each other in the peace of Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Now when Jesus came to the district of Caesarea, Caesarea, Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. I speak to you now in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Have a seat. Now a new king arose over Egypt who did not know Joseph. Now, this is an interesting way for us to enter this week's uh, first Old Testament reading because last week's Old Testament reading was about Joseph. So we've spanned in our real time one week, but in biblical time we have spanned, well there's a little bit of controversy, approximately 400 years according to the 12th chapter of Exodus or, at, or four generations according to the sixth chapter of uh, Exodus. So there has been some period of time. The people that came to Egypt were the family of Israel, Joseph being one of his sons. They came there because, again, the brothers had sold Joseph into slavery. He ended up in, G in, in Egypt. He became an advisor to the Pharaoh. And we, we've covered the story in previous readings. But the fact is, they weren't invaders. They were basically refugees due to the famine that was happening in the land in the Middle East at the time. So these were refugees who came to this new land for them, called Egypt. They settled, 
and they continued their lives and they were fruitful and they multiplied. And now over the generations, they have become large enough in population that the original Egyptians are now seeing them as a threat. From what we read here, they have done nothing that suggests that they should be a threat, but the political power, Pharaoh, is looking at them and going, a lot of them and, you know, not as many of us as in comparison, so we have a problem here. Pharaoh is looking at them as others. Pharaoh is looking at them as a threat. But remember, these are people who have lived in this country, in this land of Egypt, for generations. These people, while yes, their religion says they must have different customs because that's how God wants them to live. So they have different dietary uh, rules. They probably dress a little bit differently, but they live in Egypt. They are Egyptian. That's, that's, they're Jewish. Well, in those days it wouldn't have been called Jews. They are Israelite Egyptians, but they would be considered, I'm sure, by themselves to be a part of this land because that's where they live. This is our home right now. Yes, maybe God has a plan for us down the road, but this is our home. Because they're treated as a threat, or because Pharaoh sees them as a threat, he then, be, he then treats them like they're a threat. He oppresses them. He, the first things he does is force labor. Then, when things still don't continue the way he wishes, we look at infanticide. Go and kill all the, all the boys as they're born. When that doesn't work, well, go and find those babies and drown them in the Nile. These things sound horrible to us. These things sound like they are barbaric customs of a former time, a time that has no connection to us in this day and age. However, while we may not be taking people we see as a threat of taking their children and drowning them in rivers, I would suggest that we are seeing in our day and in our age, and especially in this moment, a similar thing happening where we see people who don't look like us, who wear different clothing than us, who might even practice a different religion than us, not as fellow, in this particular case, Canadians, or whatever country you might happen to be in if, if you're watching this, but as the other, as an alien, as a threat, as somebody who doesn't deserve to be here like we deserve to be here. There's always been an undercurrent of racism because human beings tend to have biases. And if we don't control and understand our biases, Prejudice and racism is a result of that. So it's always been here. But lately, in my observation, it has become more overt, more open. And while often these signs of prejudice or racism, especially if they happen to be on YouTube or Facebook or whatever, do tend to generate a strong reaction from a lot of people, the fact is, when you speak, at least in my experience, to people of color, and when they're prepared to speak honestly and openly to somebody who isn't one of their own group, you will find, quite often, that yes, they experience sometimes subtle and sadly sometimes not so subtle types of racism and prejudice every single day. In our particular experience, in this country, the original people in the story we just heard, the Egyptians, the ones who were always there, are our First Nations. They experience quite often and quite routinely, sadly, all sorts of racism, both the overt type that gets on YouTube and the more subtle systemic type that in some ways is even more dangerous because it doesn't get identified for what it is.
Now, with all of that going on, we add another layer of stress and anxiety in the world. We add COVID-19. And what has happened is again, in some ways, a fairly predictable event when one considers human beings and the failings that each one of us has. It is not uncommon now for people to be seen as a threat because you, whoever that group is, is a carrier of COVID. You are a threat to our health and our well-being. Not because you actually have it, but because you look a certain way. Maybe you're Asian. Oh, you came from China. You have COVID. Well, not everybody in China has COVID, and not everybody who has COVID is Chinese. So that logic is sort of problematic, to say the least. Lately, in our province of Manitoba, Hutterite people have become seen as the other. Oh, there's been outbreaks on Hutterite colonies or Hutterite communities. Hutterites have COVID, we have to be careful. Again, not every Hutterite has COVID and not everybody who has COVID is a Hutterite. We tend through our human nature to want to classify people and things very quickly. Part of it is our human survival. We learned quickly as primitive people, that looks safe, that doesn't look safe. So for instance, if I'm walking down a street at night and I look down a back lane, I think that's the shortest road to where I want to go. But there is a big guy in a leather jacket sort of hanging around in the back lane. Am I more or less likely to go down that lane than if he wasn't there? I would argue that the chances are for most people, they would look at that man and they would go, I see a potential threat. I am going to continue on down the street. I'm not going to go down that lane. That's human nature. That's that in inherent instinct of protectiveness that each one of us has, because you know what? We've learned over the course of our evolution to recognize potential threats. That might be the nicest man in the world. But in that particular context, he doesn't look okay to me. When we take that man out of that context, though, and we still decide that he is a threat, in other words, it's a man in a leather jacket walking down the street, we now have a problem because we are identifying somebody by what they look like and assigning attributes to them that may or may not be accurate at all. Again, that is part of the inherent biases that all of us as human beings have. However, we are called over and over and over again to love our neighbor. To love the other, to love the stranger, to love the foreigner, to love the immigrant, to love anyone and everyone, because that's how we are called to live as Christians. Is that challenging? Yes, it is. However, it is exactly what we are called to do. It is exactly what we as Christians are called to if we look at Jesus and say, you are the Messiah, the Son of God. You are my Lord. If we declare Jesus to be Lord, we are called, therefore, to follow the rules of Jesus. And the rule of Jesus, the first rule, is love. Now, does that mean I have to walk down that lane in the middle of the night by that man? No, it doesn't. But we can't hate him. Does it mean that I don't need to do things to protect myself, my health during this time of pandemic? Is wearing a mask a Christian thing to do? Or does it represent fear? Well, in my opinion, wearing a mask is a outward and visible sign of the love we have for our neighbor. Because 
I don't know with 100% certainty that I don't have COVID. Anyone can have COVID, including me. So I will wear a mask when I have to be in close proximity with others, not to protect me from them, but to protect them from me. So in my view, the things that we are doing right now in this time of pandemic, the physical things we do to keep ourselves and others safe, is absolutely a act of love. But when we look at others with suspicion for no other reason than they look a certain way, oh, you're Asian, you may have COVID. Oh, you're a Hutterite, you have COVID. Oh, you're a whatever other bias we have, and you may have COVID. There's where you start to move away from the love of God and moving more towards the mindset of Pharaoh. Our humanness wants us in so many ways to be like Pharaoh. But Jesus calls us away from that. Jesus calls us into the rule of love. And when we love, it's hard to be afraid. Amen. I would invite you now to return to your prayer book to page 189 and to stand with me as we proclaim the articles of our faith as found in the Apostles' Creed. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I would invite you now to adopt an attitude of prayer most comfortable for you. Let us pray with confidence to the Lord, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving Father, we give you thanks for the church throughout the world. We give you thanks for its message of love, of tolerance, and of inclusion. We ask you to help us to resist the urges and the temptations of being the Pharaoh, of seeing others with fear. Heavenly Father, in this particular diocese, we pray for our churches in the South as we must again separate and stand apart and due to the pandemic we must again suspend our meetings we pray that as we separate we still will remain together in spirit that we will continue to search out new ways of being the servants to each other that we are called to be we pray for the communion throughout the world and the Anglican Church of Canada. We pray for our province of Rupert's Land and this diocese of Brandon. And we pray for this parish of St. Matthew. We also pray for our church leaders as they guide us through these seas of troubled waters. We pray for our Bishop William, our assisting Bishop Larry, our Metropolitan Greg, our National Indigenous Archbishop Mark, our Primate Linda, and the Archbishop of Canterbury Justice, Justin. O oh Lord, guard and direct your church in the way of unity, service, and praise. 
Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the world. This day we hold up in prayer those places in the world where fear abounds, where love is diminished. We pray for Yemen, Sudan, Syria, Afghanistan, Iraq and Iran, Lebanon, Palestine, Israel, North and South Korea, Russia, the Ukraine, and the United States. Heavenly Father, give to all nations an awareness of the unity of the human family. Lord, hear our prayer. We hold up in prayer today all those who have experienced racism or prejudice, those who are seen as the other, as the threat, as the less worthy. Most especially, we hold up in prayer our brothers and sisters in our First Nations across this country. We pray for anybody who is singled out as a threat over the pandemic, our Asian brothers and sisters, and our Hutterite brothers and sisters. Cleanse our hearts of prejudice and selfishness and inspire us to hunger and thirst for what is right. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who this day suffer because of poverty or homelessness. We pray for those who will struggle to find their daily bread. We pray for those who must go to work in these times of pandemic in order to provide for themselves and their families. And we pray for those who have lost their jobs and are now struggling to make ends meet. Loving God, teach us to use your creation for your greater praise, that all may share in the good things you provide. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray this day for those who've been inflicted or affected by COVID-19, for their families and their friends, for those in our hospital or our nursing homes, any awaiting surgery, recovering from it, or suffering from long-term health issues, mental health issues, addictions, or isolation. And we pray for those who minister to the sick and to the marginalized. We pray for our first responders, our doctors, nurses, and medical technicians. We pray for researchers and scientists, for social workers and mental health workers. And in this community, we pray for 7th Street Access, Samaritan House, Helping Hands, and the Bear Clan. Strengthen all who give their energy or skill for the healing of those who are sick in body or in mind. Lord, hear our prayer. And Heavenly Father, as we move into this second time of a more strict isolation, a second time where we must shut our churches, we pray that you will stand alongside each person who is in distress over this. Those who are growing weary of being isolated. Those who are frustrated by the limits the pandemic has put on them. Set free all who are bound by fear and despair. Lord, hear our prayer. And lastly, Heavenly Father, grant a peaceful end and eternal rest to all who are dying, and your comfort to those who mourn. Oh, Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. On page 191. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. 
we are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. My sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God of glory, receive all we offer this day as a symbol of our love and increase in us that true and perfect gift. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Eucharistic prayer number two on page 196. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living Word through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you. And so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross that he might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is my blood which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your holy church. Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I am the bread of life, says the Lord. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. My sisters and brothers, the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us pray. Living God, increase in us the healing power of your love. Guide and direct us that we may please you in all things for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, whose, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in christ jesus forever and ever amen and now my sisters and brothers may the peace of god which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of god and of the son our lord jesus christ and the blessing of god almighty the father the son and the holy spirit be with you this day and always amen, amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.